Hello everyone, my name is Surreal Beliefs and welcome to Tyranny, an isometric RPG where you play the role of a villain, or at the very least, a member of a villain's army. You play from a very different perspective that you don't often get a chance to in a lot of games. Obsidian is very good with their writing and I can't wait to actually go through the story and all of the dialogue. To let you know, I will be taking my time. I want to read out what is in the game. I want to focus on the story and everything that comes with that, which means that it will not be a fast paced let's play. And I want to go through every choice that I'm able to go through. Let's go through the new game now and I'll show you how to make a character and all of that. We've got the normal difficulty, which requires strategy and efficiency. I'm going to play on that for now. If in the future I become rather proficient, then I may change that. But for now, I think that will be sufficient for me. Trial of Iron, if you want to have only one life, well, you can go down that route. I have a concept for my character, a practical, pragmatic man in the vein of Achilles. Here we go. Enjoy the cinematic, and then I'll come back to you whenever we create our character. For over 400 years, the armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos's final conquest has come to our corner of the world, and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos's ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunon, the Adjudicator. Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos's minions. Tunon brings Kairos's laws to newly conquered lands, aided by the Fate Binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fate Binders when Kairos's armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? How could they have known? Now we get to create our new character. I have a concept for him already. I made sure to play with it a bit. That way I'm not here, you know, going, hmm, what color should my eyebrows be? All right. I'm going to play as a male. I'm going to be rather stocky, but muscular. We'll be tan. In the Northern Empire, where you were born, men enjoy equal protections under the law of the Overlord Kairos. In the southern lands of the Tears, only men may own or captain ships, but real estate is restricted to women. Men may lease, but durable ownership of the land in the Tears always passes to eldest daughters or sister. Most sons enter their father's profession by their mid-teens. Those without a profession or family lands to work and find purpose by pledging service to one of the Overlord's mighty Archons. Criminals, derelicts, and, ar and others are often conscripted into the armies of the Archons. If a child cannot forge his own skine, he will certainly find one in battle. Now over here, I have a look for him. That hair is actually the hair that I didn't want. I'm going to show you the hair too. There's a lot of options for you. I really do enjoy the art style. I would rather a more stylistic manner of art than a generic fantasy appearance. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that. I'm going to go and take that helmet appearance, that portrait. I mean, whenever you have portraits, you can try to make a character that looks like one of them. Or you just make your own and try to pick one that's kind of close to it. I have mine. Right back we go. I want a beard as well. I kind of like the idea of having a bit of gray in my beard. That I'm not completely new to the world. I'm a little bit harsh. Though a great mustache would be fun too. I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> Let's go over here real quick. Right over here. I've got my beard. I've got my hair. Black hair. I'm going to make it a dark brown. Male aggressive. That was so hard. Unbelievable. 
look out. The tattoos are actually really cool. I like them a lot. I'm gonna grab one. Some warrior markings for me. We'll get a little bit tribalistic here. Oh, I like those a lot. All right, so I'm gonna take that as well. There we go. Well, no, not that one. I don't want it on my chin. People can look at it later, just not, you know, with what I'm doing right now. All right, like flames in a hand. Let's move on again. How did you join Kairos' army? You've got various choices here. Pit fighter, hunter, guild princess, noble scion, diplomat, war mage, lawbreaker. I'm choosing soldier. Unable to settle the year's accounts with grain, your parents offered you as tithe to the overlord instead. Seeing your first battle as a child, you've known all your life how to fight, how to stay calm at the sight of blood and disembowelment, and how to rely on your fellow warriors. Deemed smarter than the average killer, you were groomed for command and given an education at letters and numbers. With rumors of war, it seemed recruitment into the disfavored legion would be the obvious match for your skills. With the Archon of Justice is known to say that good iron is not used for swords, and good minds are not used for soldiers. Claimed by 2-9, you were instead drafted to the court of fate binders where your martial skills were put to use in the enforcement of Kairos' laws all right i'm gonna use a sword and shield i like the idea of being tanky of being able to do damage and not to mention i like the overall appearance of what i have you've got a bunch of things that you could pick but i like the idea again of being like my group's tank of being able to tank my enemy's hits and i think i'm gonna go for we've got shield slam or Sunder for my initial ability. Dazing them would be interesting. They would be dazed for 20 seconds. Over here, I could reduce their armor. I think I'm gonna reduce their armor. I like the idea of Sundering them. Then I have another choice for another expertise, and I'm definitely going for something. Oh, a war mace would be a lot of fun. Check that out. Wielding two-handed weapon puts your focus on power rather than speed. Yeah, I like the idea of bashing right through them. That appeals to me quite a bit, but a javelin would give me a bit of range while also still having the capability to fight in melee. Wielding a javelin is a good compromise between melee and range. Drone weapons deal more damage than bows, but cannot attack from as far away. They also have the benefit of being able to switch between range and melee attacks depending on the enemy's distance. Yeah, I think I'll try that out. We do have hobble, which will, of course, make them hobble about if I hit them. Or hard shot. My accuracy to hit will go up. And they will begin to bleed. That appeals to me, too. All right, we've got a lot of banners to pick from. Let's go look at all that. Which one do I... Oh, I like that. Okay, I think I found the one I want. And I have my banner. I love it already. I kind of like the idea of having a brown... It's more of a neutral color. It appeals to me. Okay, nearly done. I think that might do. I have my armor, but I wonder if you could change your colors later. I don't actually know. That would be cool. I mean, that would align with my banner, or I could switch them. A bit like that. Yeah, I think that'll do. I like it. My name? Well, you can call me Tychus. There we go. We have Might, Finesse, Quickness. Quickness will relate to the cooldown of your abilities. Finesse is about if you're able to hit your foe or to reduce a hit type of damage whenever you're hit. Then, of course, you've got Might, your overall physical strength, how strong you are. Okay, I'll put three points over into that. Three points into Finesse to into quickness and I feel like that will be sufficient at the moment all right athletics very important to me my ability to traverse difficult terrain as well as their ability to execute complicated moves in battle it's used in dialogue to determine my ability to intimidate or physically overpower someone I'll put 40 into it one-handed weapons 40 30 for throne and then for parry a bit of that Okay, I can choose quick start, or I can go through conquest and show you every step of what you could choose from. I think I'll do that. Here we go. All right, Tychus, we've got a battle to fight. All the world has fallen to Kairos, and now the Overlord's eye is on the tears, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos's reign. Two armies, 
the disfavored and the scarlet chorus march south from the northern empire the last realm to fall to kairos a century prior in the early days of 428 kairos's armies arrive at the gates of judgment the mountainous border that we tearsmen so long believed unassailable unable to agree on a unified plan of defense the various leaders of the tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the conquerors until it's too late here's the map which is where you can choose well what you choose before you actually begin your gameplay story it's very important as you can see your decisions matter choose wisely that will affect how my characters responded to while the other faction is in a game 428 TR year one of Kairos's conquest all right there we are very important location the bastard city the bastard city stood on the northern border between Kairos's empire and the tears built upon a natural harbor at the crossroads between realms the city was a nexus of commerce to the tears it was the center of all wealth to a northerner is a little more than a backwater trading post its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos's military conquest circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos's army Taking the city would send a message to the rest of the tiers. Kairos's will is insurmountable. We've got a few choices. We could infiltrate. I like the idea of being clever and doing that. But I would like to have more of a legendary twist to it. Keep in mind, we're the mightier empire. I would rather not use subterfuge. The gates of judgment that I could choose to fight with the Scarlet Chorus. And if you ever want to know more information, you can hover your mouse over the golden lettering. And then you can find out more, which I love. The armies of Kairos took the battle to the Gate of Judgment, trumpeting an opening call of the conquest of the Tears. The two armies brought their distinctive sense of order and chaos to the assault. You went to battle alongside the army whose approach best suited your strengths, and that would be the disfavored. Standing shield to shield with Kairos' ironclad elite, you advance on the mercenary army, purchased by the nobles of the bastard city. The Legion wanted to send a message to the Tears that superior breeding and disciplined training would win the day. The bastard city learned too late that the military is earned and never bought. The mercenary army quickly found themselves outclassed by the superior tactics and formation of the disfavored. This few who lived to the end of the battle were rounded up, the weak executed, and the stronger slaves to haul the army's wagons on a journey south. One choice over. Okay. Feeding the host, you found a way to feed Kairos' armies in enemy territory. Or over here, to judge the enemy. Well, I would rather be pragmatic about it. Against the most optimistic projections, the disfavored Scarlet Corps made short work of their local defenses. They did so well that the armies quickly outpaced their supply caravans. Troops were plentiful, but food was scarce. You only had time to execute one plan to secure provisions. Scarlet Corps would like to pillage from farms and villages, but that would really brutalize the people, and they might hate us in the future. You authorized his favorite troops to confiscate food and supplies for traveling merchant caravans. The tears had already spent ignorant centuries glutting themselves outside of Kairos' law. We'll do that. After raiding the wagons of unsuspecting caravans and securing days worth of provisions and supplies, the disfavored found a cache of goods behind a hidden panel. They confiscated potions and elixirs bound for secret contacts within the bastard city. The hall filled the disfavored larder with provisions for the following year and denied the defenders of Bastard City supplies that would be desperately needed in the siege to come. Taking the Bastard City. The armies of Kairos amassed around the Bastard City, the first bastion of the tears to fall. Both armies longed to storm the walled outpost, the Scarlet Corps howling for plunder and the disfavored forming an unbreakable shield wall. Your prowess on the field of battle had carried them this far, but there was one more step before total victory. But the armies had inspired schemes to take the Bastard City. Which did you support? We've got quite a few here. I could take a mixture of disfavored as well, of course. Scouts over the city walls to sabotage its defenses, which would give me a unique ability. Or over here, Searing Palm. I'm going to go for my faction that I favor. You joined the disfavored vanguard in a direct assault upon the city gates. No fortification would stand before the unstoppable legion. We'll get Warrior's Respite, which would heal me over time, but my damage would go down while I'm being healed. 
With heroic courage and legendary determination, the disfavored battered the gates of the bastard city to splinters. Those who fell under the consistent hell of errors or cascades of boiling pitch left the battlefield temporarily, only to appear hours later as Archon Graven Ash, its protection healed their numerous wounds. In time, the gates gave way and Kairos' forces spilled inside the city's walls with resounding cheers of victory. Right, there's an eye. Okay, cool little Archon. Right. He now fights for him. That's pretty cool. Now we're done. Only with one part. There's more to go after. The bastard city settled into a new state of normalcy with every tower displaying Kairos' banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a decorated career to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Two not sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Kairos' conquest, either as judge and overseer of the settlement of Lethian's Crossing, or as a war advisor with the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. Well, I'm a warrior. Let's go over here then. The troops of the mountain realm of Apex stood idle in the safety of their valley, biding their time as their neighbors in the bastard tier fell. In the second year of war, a joint force of the disfavored squad of course crossed over the mountain to take control of the tier's central valley. Off we go. 429 TR, year two of Kairos' conquest. The mountain nation of Apex ruled for generations by the queens of House Vendry and stood at the heart of the tears. No army could bypass the landlocked realm without leaving their flank exposed to attack. By the second year of the war, the disfavored and scarlet course had pushed deep into the tears. Elements of both armies were dispatched to conquer Apex. Tunan assigned you to accompany them, tasked with bringing Kairos' law to the territory as well as keeping an eye on both armies. Denial of strength. Okay, that would be about a new school of mages. Presenting new problems and opportunities. That means that we would either capture them or kill them all. Let's go over here. The Battle of Edring Pass. The Edith's favorite since their most destructive ally to crush Edring Fort, Karn. Archon of Stone buried the stronghold under an avalanche triggered from the surrounding mountains. The, the, the Scarlet Chorus were promised captured enemies for recruitment, yet none survived the onslaught. The course demanded compensation. I need coffee. You congratulated the disfavored for taking the pass without risking the lives of Kairos' loyal servants. At this stage of the campaign, it was vital to use any advantage that would mitigate ally losses. The Scarlet Corps claims let's see, were insignificant compared to the lossless victory. You congratulated the disfavored and encouraged the Scarlet Corps to better value their soldiers' lives, a suggestion the gang bosses took worse than the original offense. Vowing to remember this, the slighted army returned to Camp to Sulk. If not, lick their wounds. Oh, great. I've anchored them. Okay. Down here. Swords of the Fallen. Or over here. A local custom of the tears created strife between Kairos' armies. The enemy readied for a peacetime festival as Kairos' forces armed for battle. Alright, it looks like here I could choose whether or not to kill non-combatants. I'm not really a huge fan of that. Let's go. Swords of the Fallen. Scarlet Corps soldiers were seen wearing disfavored gear, supposedly taken from those who fell in battle. The disfavored were outraged, citing tradition that their armor passed only to next of kin within the army. In the debate of tradition versus practicality, you had to rule in favor of one army over another. I'm about being practical and pragmatic. You denied the disfavored's complaint as the demands of war rendered such vain customs irrelevant. Lacking in suitable armor, the Scarlet Corps would retain what they had collected. You explained to Graven Ash and his disfavor that the army needed capable arms more than they needed a rigid adherence to tradition. The Scarlet Corps expressed gratitude for understanding their challenging position, but the disfavor took the ruling with less grace. Graven Ash returned to camp and conducted a prolonged series of funeral rites for every soldier who fell in the conquest, bellowing their names repeatedly and expressing loud gratitude for the dead. Fall of Apex. After many spans of battles, the army of Apex finally agreed to peace talks. The queen herself had agreed to attend a negotiation summit and invited a representative of Tunan to discuss the possible terms. How did you negotiate the enemy surrender? All right, I could go through mediation and negotiate the surrender of the Valley of Kairos' forces, putting an end to further bloodshed, or taunting the Queen of Apex into striking you under a banner of truce, you baited the Queen of Apex into a duel and slew her, frightening her vassals into submission. The Scarlet Corps urged you to show the Overlord's strength by any means necessary. During peace talks, a well-placed insult goaded the Queen of Apex into striking you. 
You responded to the slight by challenging her to a duel. The, the queen was skilled in battle. You, your field experience outmatched her court training. As her body lay cooling on the ground, you demanded that her followers kneel before the overlord's banner. Unable to rise above the fear of the moment, the remaining leaders capitulated, surrendering the valley to Kyrus's forces. Done. We have one more year. Let's go have a look then. The land of Apex finally rested in the hands of Kyrus's forces. The Scarlet Corps paused to revel in victory while the disfavored prepared for the next fight, affording themselves but an evening's rest. Kyrus's armies radiated out from the conquered citadel and worked their way across the tiers. The disfavored Scarlet Corps aimed to dominate as much territory as possible in the coming year. Your distinguished reputation of Kyrus's military left them choice of your destination yours to make. Stalwart. What? Okay. A very strong military location. Vellum Citadel. They have treasure, knowledge, and secrets, or over here, Azure. I think I'll go after them. For fun. Let's go check it out. 430 TR, year three of Kairos' conquest. Let's check it out now. The nation of Azure, once the richest settlement of the tears. Set on the verdant fertile plain is a disfavored clash with Azure's defenders. The Scarlet Corps continued against the region's tribal beastmen who protected their ancestral lands with incredible fury. Kairos dispatched the Archon Karn to break the stalemate and force Azure into submission. The colossal man of stone and flesh arrived as instructed, but earning his cooperation was a tall order, even for you. The destruction of Azure. Or stalked by shadows. What's over here? Beastmen. Right, they want me to kill them. The destruction of Azure. Karn, the Archon of Stone, carved a deadly path through Azure using his powers to blight the land. It's got a chorus complained that his tactics left no farmland to feed the growing army. Since Karn marched with the disfavored, the Scarlet Chorus held the Legion responsible for the destruction of Lost Harvest. Okay. Over here. Or over here. You ordered Karn's disciples, the disfavored Earthshakers, to use their magic to repair the arable land destroyed by the Archon of Stone. We do need food. At Karn's rate of destruction, the lands of Azure would soon be unable to sustain the crops. But Kairos wanted a conquered land, not a barren wasteland. The Squad of Chorus voiced these concerns and you backed them, going so far as to enlist his favored mages for aid. Though loath to pause their studies and focus on agriculture, the mages grudgingly ascended and traveled with the rear guard, working to heal the land as they went. Karn's Madness or over here? Forced into the fray. Let's go check it out. The Archon of Stone refused to rejoin the war camp, loudly denying Kairos' claim over Azure. What? Nothing less than a full unit of soldiers could subdue the trees in its Archon. Yet neither army was willing to risk lives tracking them down. You delivered the order that sent Kairos' forces marching after Karn. Okay. Yeah, it'll be our job. When Karn brought them victory, the disfavored held him as one of their number. When Karn defined the will of the overlord, it fell to the disfavored to track him down and get answers. So doing a wayward Archon was a larger task than rank and file soldiers could manage on their own. The disfavored scouts returned to camp after a long journey, bearing news of irregular rock formations and beastmen chanting Karn's name. They found neither hide nor hair of the Archon of Stone, but his presence and impact on the Azure wilderness were evident. Unease spread through the army as Kairos' forces wondered what Karn's actions could mean. The Edicts of Stone the Archon of Stone made brazen declarations that Kairos had no claim to rule the tears. Soon after, word arrived that Kairos would dispatch the rebellious minion with an edict. The disfavored took solace in knowing that the edict was coming, and the commanders petitioned you to be the bearer of justice. Tunon selected you for the honor of proclaiming Kairos' edict of stone, a magical spell with the power to destroy the Archon. As he sensed his approaching doom, Karn began an assault on Plainsgate, the largest human settlement of the area. It fell to you to send Kairos' forces into a suicide mission to halt Karn's destruction while you completed the proclamation of the edict. Man, things got crazy. Over here. A full force of Karn's armies against him. If you were wrong, no one would live. Wow. I could let the Scarlet Chorus do it. Or over here. 
You know what? You believe that the only chance of slowing Karn's assault was to commit the full force of Karn's armies against him as a desperate gamble. If you were wrong, there would be no one left alive to warn the other Archons of your failure. Still, you ordered both this favored and Scarlet Corps forces to march against the Archon of Stone while you read the Overlord's Edict. The disfavored and Scarlet Corps alike questioned the wisdom of this command. You were uncompromising. This approach was the only guarantee to halt the Archon's destruction. The disfavored phalanx uh, shattered under Karn's fury and the Scarlet Corps mob was reduced to a smear under his foot. The city of Plainsgate suffered little damage at all as the armies kept Karn occupied, a small beacon of hope among the devastation. As you read the Edict of Stone, the earth under the battlefield groaned and opened. Oh man, or groaned open, splitting up outcroppings of rock that obliterate the surrounding lands for miles. When the land heaved open to take Karn, the Archon allowed it with serene acceptance. Wow. That got pretty rough. Okay. With their lands blighted and unrecognizable, the realm of Azure was left utterly ruined by the events of the war. In times to come, the tears would call this blasted region the Stone Sea for the, for the treacherous uh, rock formations and persistent quakes became the defining features of this once verdant land. Okay. The Scarlet Corps established a sprawling camp in the shattered rocky terrain and quickly absorbed those displaced by the upheaval of the land. These hapless refugees were put to work as slaves and soldiers, and the Corps slowly built themselves a makeshift fortress in a blighted, quake-ridden realm. Your tour of duty in the Broken Lands of Azur was complete. You didn't have long to rest before Tunan called you into service once more. What a terrible affair. Okay, let's go on. We made a choice. Time for our campaign. Oh, Weeping Blood Statue. Lovely. The year is 431, and Kairos's invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the disfavored and scarlet chorus redeploy to Vendrian's well to crush the resistance, but months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused. And Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers, or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict. A magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. A weeping blood statue, lovely. Here I am, and hello. Fade Binder Tychus, I presume. We've been expecting you. Have you now? Kairos the Overlord be praised. When I heard the avalanche, I feared the battle was sealed with you on the other side. The disfavored warrior clasped her gauntlet to her breastplate, the traditional salute of her legion. Here's a brief tutorial. Okay, my attribute skills, history, and gender will make up any dialogue that I'm able to make in the game. And each character is allied or part of a faction. That's how we find out. And then if we want to know more, we put a cursor over a golden emboldened word. And that will work. 
I am honored to welcome you back to Edgering Pass. The soldiers have not forgotten how you protected the integrity of our squad, nor have the locals forgotten your self-defense killing of Queen Alanta, Queen Slayer. They've taken to calling you, lucky pile of dung. I've slain how many of these south knobs and still no nickname. She shakes her hand, holding back a chuckle. A shame we cannot offer you a more festive welcome. Such things will have to wait until we deal with this insurrection. All right. Can you hear that hum in the air? That glow around the rocks? The avalanche is Kyrus's magic. The overlord has sealed the valley. Your senses seem more than mine, good fate binder. I do not pretend to know much about such things, but if that was Kyrus's magic and you're here on important business, well, you don't have to be the Archon of Secrets to guess that you're here to proclaim an edict. What does Kyrus have in store for the enemy? Ten years of festering plague? An edict of twisted bones? I'm in a hurry to deliver a message to the Archons. Let's go. Well, you've traveled a long way. I won't keep you further. I'm sure the Archons will want to hear from you. Her voice falls silent, her attention stepping eastward with alarm. Did you hear that? More runners! Third time this week, the Oathbreakers keep trying to send messengers through the mountains to gather help from outside the valley. She points over to the collapsed path by which you arrived, but they're a bit too late for that now. Come, let's show these Oathbreakers a good fight. Time for combat. Okay, a possible real-time combat system. Good to know. Here are our abilities over here. I'm going to use a good heart shot in the very beginning and cause bleeding damage. All right, and if I click down here, I can look at all of their abilities. I gotcha. I could even move them. That's pretty cool. All right, I know how to use my abilities. Click on one or use a hotkey, then click on my foe or my ally if it's a heal or buff. We have five primary defenses against attacks. We've got parry, dodge, endurance, will, and magic. Accuracy is compared to the appropriate defenses when an attack is made. All right, there are four possible results from any attack. Hit, critical hit, graze, and miss. Well, right. time to begin. All right, let's go over here now and fight directly. That's a bit of a cooldown. Yeah, the engine is based upon Pillars of Eternity. Time for me to that. thrust at you. There we are. And we got him already. All right, we'll keep on going. I'm gonna take what you have. I'll put it in my inventory directly. Hold on, I do have boots. Are they better than what I'm wearing? They look pretty good. I think I'll wear them. There we are. We have our equipment. And now we need to keep on moving. Look at all the people here bound up. The avalanche is blocked. Think you could fit through the rubble? Sure. We should be vigilant and deal with the remaining Oathbreakers in the pass. It seems like a suicide mission. What did Avengerian Guard hope to accomplish? From what we've learned from the other prisoners, the runners are instructed to escape the valley and promote support for the Oathbreakers' cause elsewhere in the tears. Aurora shrugs. I don't know who they think they will listen to, or who they think will listen to their pleas. We smashed every army, fortress, and self-proclaimed ruler. These low-born tearsmen have to offer. Perhaps they think the wild beasts will rally to their side. Let's go look over here. Minor favor. Alright, this favored victory has soaked the tears with fear. I doubt anyone would rally to their hopeless cause. My thoughts exactly. They lost this war years ago. This is little more than the last gasp of a dying people. Carry on. And here's a boulder. I can either squeeze through or move it. I'm gonna move it. <laughs> yeah, that did work. Hold on. Let me chat one more time. Okay, she's gone. Time for me to join in. I'm gonna take your armor. One of them has a fox. Pretty cool. If I need to know more, well, it's right over here. I think they'll let me know like all the important parts, though. That's why I'm not too worried about it. Okay, time to thrust. Good thing he's pretty tanky. Or that might be an issue, but he's okay. Right. Alright, I'm gonna get rid of her. Here's a good hard shot. Oh, I thought we had her, never mind. I got it. I'm gonna sunder again. She's gone. One more to go. Time to get rid of his armor. Yeah, if you've played Baldur's Gate and other games like that, then you know how the combat works in here for sure. Character recovery. They've got to recover after every action they take. 
Yeah, I'm going to read things as I go along because it's a good way to know the core of the game. That way I'm not going, huh, I wonder how that'll work. Go to interactions. We know about that already. Right. Come on, get him. Mini map. And dead. All right, tab will let me highlight things nearby that I can interact with. Okay. Here's a javelin. Is it better than mine? Ah. Uh, maybe a little bit better than my blade that I currently have equipped, but let me go and auto loot it. Don't bother with me. Go down the pass. Drastus. The soldier clutches his gut and winces. You can see a hint of entrails between his fingers. He's done for then. You're wounded and it's not trivial. He laughs through clenched teeth. This but a scratch. I've seen twice as worse, ten times over. He doubles over in pain, gagging and shivering. Keep hold of your guts then. Farewell. He releases his wound or wounds to flash you a pain salute. Hell Kairos! Alright, let's go. Things are getting pretty brutal. I'll take that. Oh, hey there. This is a big fight. Me, worm. A young Scarlet Fury weaves around the Vendrian guard at attackers, avoiding their weapons with fluid grace. She nods to acknowledge you. A breathless enemy soldier passes a glance to her countrymen. This one's crazy. Too much lead in her water. We should cut our losses and turn back. Ha, fate finder. You're here at last. Care to join me in putting these cowards out of their misery? Join the battle. For the realm of Apex, charge! The Vendrian Guard level their weapons in advance. I better take out the one over here then. Okay, she's joined my party, a capable warrior skilled in both melee and ranged combat. There's two characters in my party. I can use F1 or F2 to select either one. And I can control their AI down here. Alright. Aggressive. Blade Dancer. Save, and that will be for her behavior. Okay, companions, if you right click on the AI button, right. And she has stance abilities down here that can change up. Red Geyser. Oh, what a name. I'll have her use that one. That way she's not taking damage in combat for a time period. She might be able to dodge. And now I can begin. I have a new ability over here Bloodsuck Stone. It's a combination move that we can use together. Alright, we'll use it in a moment. Hold on. Right. I need to go after one soldier, and then I need to go help her out. One more attack, and we'll have it. Come on. Got her. One more to go. Hold on. Blood-soaked stone. Let's try it together. Oh, it didn't work. Shoot. I was hoping it would work. And she's dead as well. Welcome to Ruin. I can tell you didn't spend the conquest in a diplomat's tent. I'm verse, by the way. But there are more important things to take care of than introductions. Those Vendrian guard we killed didn't come alone. Why are the Vendrian guard attacking now? <sighs> I guess. The Vendrian guard are testing our strength in battle. Learning how we perform before they organize a real offensive. That or they're really, really desperate to get beyond the mountains and couldn't wait until nightfall. A Scarlet Fury, one of the elite killers of our ignoble gang. You'll see more than a few of us around camp, but don't let that fool you. We're a rare breed. Most of the soldiers in the Scarlet Chorus are little more than farmers and children armed with rusted forks. Makes them easier to control. The voices of Narat called his best fighters to this siege. There must be something important about Vendrian's well, though don't ask me what. The Archon isn't in the habit of spilling secrets. Not so fast. First, explain what you're the doing here. The voices of Narat told me to intercept you at Edgering Ruins before you busied yourself solving all of the camp's problems. <sighs> Guess I was too late. You're due for a meeting with the Archons, but we should handle the small matter of this ambush first. Join the battle. Eager. <laughs> I like that. Before we go, you might search among the remains of our fallen comrades. Wherever they're bound, I doubt they'll miss their boots, much less any rings or any useful iron they might be clutching. I see your point, nice and practical. No reason to pity the fallen. Before long, we might wish we'd joined them here. But at least we'll enjoy heavy pockets and warm toes. For the voices of Narat! 
Okay, let's go check out what we have nearby. That could be for her. A Fury Helm. There's a hide. I'll take the remainder of it. It's a potion. And if we look at it, more equipment. Is it better than mine? Yeah, it might be. Here's a new weapon, a bronze axe. Pretty strong looking too. I think I might actually equip two of these. Yeah. I could dual wield. Maybe later. Oh, hold on. That'll be for her. Now she has a helmet. That's a really cool helmet. I dig that. Okay. I could give you more armor. It's heavy armor. You don't need that. Never mind. But I'll take what they have. Okay. I'm changing up my equipment. Oh, cool. You can change up your colors whenever you want. Okay. Yeah, they added in a lot of cool features that you can actually commit to while in the game. Alright. I'll make it brown. A lighter brown. And we're now good. Okay. Here's my build tree. Welcome to Ruin. The Conqueror's Will. This favorite. Yeah, it'll show all the information that you need to know for all of them and your reputation with them. You can, let's see, have spell creation sigils. It's pretty cool too. I don't know any yet. All right, here we go now. We need to head down here. And done. Tarkus Demos, eyes forward, no looking back. The Venturing Guard warrior roars with his fox held high, his words largely lost over the den of combat. Queenslayer! The warrior rears back his swinging arm as the invective hisses off his tongue. I've long dreamed of laying claim to your skull. So nice of you to present yourself. You just... Huh. You just arrived at camp and they already gave you a title? Impressive. As he signals his men to charge, a sound of chanting rises from the south, drawing his attention. We have friends coming to help out. The us like chorus again. Good. Run down to Oathbreakers, let none escape. From the red mob of reinforcements from the south, a blood chanter emerges at the head of the rabble, the ornamental crest of her staff pulsing with crimson tones. Signing sigils of magic and wordlessly moving her mouth, the blood chanter scribes a series of spells into the air. Red glow surrounds the venturing guard warriors as the chanter's magic worms its way into their minds, blinding them with rage. Hold position, all of you. You there, keep to the path. The warrior gestures along the canyon trail. But his soldiers turned their attention to the Scarlet Chorus, roaring challenges. No, don't engage him! We need to run! His order falling on deaf ears, the warrior reluctantly readies his weapon. What a terrible group. My turn to fight. Okay. Unique and powerful abilities called companion combos. Right. We'll try that out. Recovery. Let's go give it a go right now. Come on now. She's on her way. Wow. Did we kill him? Oh no, he took a lot of damage. Okay. I'm going to move back to my own main character. Hard shot. We can cause bleeding damage over time. Which is definitely appealing to me. I've already taken some damage. I'm going to have to use my warrior's respite in time or even a potion. There's one. He's dead. Okay, we'll focus on another one together. I'll thrust. I like that bow. Pretty cool bow. I'll tear your skeleton out. Either way, she's doing damage. One more. I'm gonna make a hard shot too. Will do. Or I was going right. to. There we go. Oh no, you're dead. Never mind. Wow, they're all dead but him. Oh, and that one guy. Come quick, we have a situation on the cliffside. They have the commander. I better go now. They need my help. But while we're here, heavy armor. A bit more armor, sure. They do have more. I'm going to keep on looking. Whoa. I mean, I'll take that. I'll put the remainder in my chest. 
Several skulls bleached by the sun and picked clean by carrion birds. Ooh. Over here, strewn haphazardly around the cart. Yeah. The course isn't really elite at all, but they are plentiful. I right, take all. Hey man, I'm gonna take what I can. They don't need it. She told me to pillage and loot. I mean, it might be belonging to her faction, but hey. Yeah, here's a barrel. Gotta look in a barrel. Gotta find out what's inside. What could it be? Skycap. Cosma, are you hiding? Well, we can't let you do that. Come on, let's go have a chat. What are you doing? You'll draw attention to me. What? I don't want to let him hide. Hold on, is she going to follow me? Come on, I need you to come follow right me. Direction. Yeah. Do I need to tell her to follow me though, or will she just do it? I guess I'll find out. Hold on. Defend party. Defend party. There we are. Stow your weapons where we find out how long a man screams before hitting the ravine down below. Cornered between a precipitous drop and a band of angry soldiers, the Oathbreaker warrior holds a disfavored officer at knife point. Skewer him, worry not for me. Graven Ash will protect. The disfavored officer winces, blood seeping from the seams of his braces and cuirass. You heard the man. He plainly invited you to use that little blade of yours. What are you waiting for? Permission from your pimp? This blade, with a jerk of the knife, he slices off a clump of Dress's matted hair. If you're so eager to see your ally dead, just step closer. Oh boy. Alright, if I look at it, I think I like the one over here. Why kill that disfavored nobody when you could take your swing at the Queen Slayer? Or lower your weapon, then charge for it and wrest a knife from him. I am pretty athletic. The Oathbreaker cracks a wide smile as you lower your weapon. That's right. Now the rest of you drop these weapons, or those weapons. With his attention on the other warriors who dash forward, he reaches out with his dagger to slay Drastus, but your hand is already on his wrist. With a wrenching twist, you mangle his hand, dropping the dagger harmlessly to the ground. The disfavored warriors rush forward from either side of you. Tyrell barely manages a strained gasp before being hacked and impelled upon their swords and spears. <laughs> Kyrus be praised. That Oathbreaker fought with the rage of Karn himself. Drastus slides a trembling hand along the cut on his neck. Thank you, Fatebinder. I thought today was my last. From the look of it, guess they thought if they swarmed to pass, maybe one might make it out? We found a few scraps of parchment on the bodies. He holds out a handful of crumpled parchment for your inspection. A student of letters such as yourself should be able to make sense of this. Okay. Examine the parchment. Repeating the same messages in different written scripts, the parchments explain the Venturian Guard's desire to overthrow Kaiser's Archons and route their armies from the tears. The pages aren't addressed to any specific reader, but rather openly invites all who remain loyal to the Younger Realms to gather at Venturian's well. Recruitment material. They were trying to bring more traders to the fight. Well, from the look of it, we kept them from slipping out of the valley, whatever they hope to accomplish. I think their plan died here. The Archons are expecting you. When you're ready, leave by the gate to the southeast and follow the trails down slip for a few hours. You'll see the campfires leagues away. Can't miss it. Well, great. Alright. Quest completed. There's a Falx again. A very cool weapon. Haste, plus one to quickness. I think she should have that. I already have a lot of loot. I think I'm pretty good on the loot department. Alright. Let's go look around. Oh, here's a chest. I want to get up here somehow. Can I talk to any of them? Hold on. A wound to closing. Fate Binder. We are honored by your presence. Need something? Okay, how long have you been with the disfavored? Seven years. She pauses to count on her fingers. Two seasons may have a handful of days. I train at Fort Resolution a bit before the conquest. Compared to the commanders you find around camp or station at Iron Hearth, that makes me one of the young bloods. 
This has been a longer grueling campaign, but the end is in sight. We'll soon have the Oathbreakers back under control. Then we can rest, retrain, and even cycle out truth so we can see our families again. What's the situation here at Vendrian's Well, or Inn? The Oathbreakers hold the Citadel at the heart of the valley, the one built around the base of the spire. She points east towards the tower in the distance. The, Men or the Matani River has been our largest headache during the siege. It's unsafe for armored troops to ford, save for at key locations the enemy knows this as well as we do. I knew it would be a lot farther along if the Scarlet Corps used its alleged strength and numbers to ford the river themselves and overwhelm the enemy. She looks at Verse with a disapproving air. As it is, we must take the valley slowly and advance into this favored bulwark, since that's where the real work gets done. Because all it takes is numbers to cross the river under a hell of arrows. If the disfavored were quicker to act, maybe the Avenging Guard wouldn't be so trained up to face us. Oh boy. I don't have the lore for it, or I would go down that route. Aurora is correct, and the slow advance will win out. We can go down that route. Without question, patience and determination will deliver these tearsmen to us in chains. Okay, what can you tell me of the Vendrian Guard? They are the last gasp of the younger realms. Among them are warriors that escaped the bastard city siege, a few refugees from other victories, and a bunch of Vendrian locals with delusions of independence. These southern wastrels cannot match our iron, nor the course's numbers. What on Taradis gave them the nerve to rise up and ask for a second helping of battle is anyone's guess. I once saw a forge-bound artisan set himself on fire, occupational hazard. That was an unpleasant day, the first of many, to be honest. I wouldn't have liked to see the Edicts of Stone hit Karn's Rebellious High, but I'm more grateful that I didn't have to march against him. I'm sure you did whatever you could to stop that madman. Carry on. All right. We had a good chat. Let's go now. <laughs> the Archon demands all prisoners be given a chance to serve the course. Oh, they're having a fight. The prisoner says his name is Tarkus Demos. Drassus lets out a long sigh, tapping his gauntlet or his gauntleted finger to his temple. Then I don't think this is a complicated matter. He dies. His family's been a driving force in Avenger and Guard. Killing him should demoralize whatever's left of the Tarkus clan. But we must offer the enemy's redemption. Okay. Or the enemy redemption. Well, save for their inbred nobles, just ask the Queen Slayer. The Chanter lets out a hearty chuckle through an incomplete set of teeth. But corpses can't serve the course, so while mercy always pains me, it is what the voices of Narat commands. If anything, I say you owe us, Fate Binder. Last time you were here, Karn nearly destroyed his past, taking all our potential conscripts in the process, and you refused to let us recruit anew from the disfavored. Are you going to deny us again? We let you take prisoners, but you can't control them. You send these concerts out on patrol and they never return, defecting all over again. I can't let this nonsense strategy continue. Well, I insist this Oathbreaker be taken to the voices of Narat, leaving us at an impasse. Fortunately, we have a fate binder here to settle the matter for us. The chanter turns to you and an expected smile creeping across her face. So what say you? What should become of this prisoner? Hmm. Kill him. The Tearsmen can't be trusted. Rakes, thieves, and whores, nothing more. We were far too merciful the first time. Drassus nods to a nearby warrior. Have this one tied up. He and his friends can watch each other rot in the sun. I won't keep you here any longer, Fatebinder. I know you have important business in the valley. For the glory of Kairos. Let him die. Alright. Can I talk to you now? Fate Binder, what an honor to have one of Tunan's court visit our humble holdfast. Need supplies? Bursting with energy, the merchant slams her palm on the, or down on the top of the crate. If so, you've come to the right place. I need to get my glasses. <laughs> so what will it be today? She spreads out a welcome arm over her wares. How is trade? Well, this is a service posting. No profit up here in the past. And that's Harchi and Bronze's orders. But when we march out of the valley, I'm back on my own schedule, and here's to hoping the this year is a good one. The Overlord forbids the extortion of the pathways. Good thing, too, because in years past, I'd lose most of my profits to tolls. Couldn't turn a copper if I tried to haul long distance. Let's see what you have. Okay, you have basic gear. Nothing crazy. I had a filling camping supplies. Do I have any? I'll take one. Got a few things here that I could give you. Here's a whetstone. More armor. I think I'll keep my own. You can take that bronze sword for now. 
and trade. All right. Rings would be currency. That's kind of cool. You could carry that. I like that. There really isn't anything here I want. Yeah, not really. I'm pretty good to go at the moment. Might change in the future, but I'm good right now. Let's go move on. Okay. Again, I've got to figure out how to get her to follow me. I did right-click myself, and it didn't have it locked. All right, I've got to go find a pathway now. How do I get to hell? I've already done my part. What's over here? Store. Scrolls. Critical hit. Talking with companions. I can talk to them at any time. They will interject in the conversation. Skill increased. Lore and reactivity tool tips. Welcome to Taratus. I got you. Armor. Engagement. Weapon sets and quest journal. Anyway, Sorry. here's where I go. I just wanted to look around the camp too. Oh, what's up here? I should have the capability to climb up. Climb the rope. Yeah. I'm pretty good at climbing. How about that? Oh, hello. A potion of invisibility. I'll take that. And down we go again. That will work out. Let's go right now. We're heading down here. Can't do or that. I thought we were. Hold on. I don't think they want me to head back, do they? Where is it at? Can you find my missions? Ah, here we go. One complete. Southeast, yeah. That's where I need to go. I know there's a way to get... Ah, here we go. The gate. I haven't played an isometric in a while. Takes me a moment to look around. Found Tarkus. Hey, buddy. You there, muttering through a mouthful of congealed blood. Tarkus Demos hangs from his stake. And as I beg you... Yeah, I'll kill him. You plunge your weapon into his heart, ending his life with one quick thrust. Yeah. I'm a kind man, I told you. Okay, I need my party to come join me. Come on. Hurry the hell up. Oh, that's how you do it. That's how you select all of them. I got you. I didn't play with his commands down here. And we can camp at any time to heal up. This favored camp. This fort was constructed shortly after routing rebels along the valley's western edge. The Archon Graven Ash directs all his favored efforts from this location. Three hours to get there. Here we go. Now we're here. It took a moment. Okay, before we go on, we're going to end it here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like down below. I won't be bringing up that you know notion every time that i have a video for our current let's play i would like to kind of keep things seamless as we go on but it is a introduction to the game i'm new to it but i am going to try to learn more and hopefully show all of you a very awesome game don't forget to sub until then